Hi, I'm Jordana Michelle, lesbian love coach and creator of Women Wanting Women, the place to be to find and keep lesbian love and to learn the secrets of same-sex female attraction. But in this video, I want to talk about why lesbians can be so clicky. And this is really important because if we've ever been out somewhere and felt like women were being clicky, if we ever felt like we were out somewhere and there were groups of women that weren't including us, that weren't making us feel welcome among their group, it could be a very paralyzing experience. And it, if we feel as though the women around us are being clicky, we can end up feeling stuck, we could end up feeling unwelcome, we could feel as if we can, we're not able to connect with the women that we want to connect with, we could feel as if we're not able to make the friends that we want to make or talk to the people that we want to talk to, or we could just feel really frustrated and insecure and totally triggered by bad memories from maybe when we were young girls, when girls were mean to us. You know, it's, it's really an uncomfortable thing. So I think it's an important thing to talk about. So in this video, I wanna talk about what clickiness is and why it happens among women. I wanna talk about why it's possible that lesbian clicks could actually be a little bit more intense even than cisgendered heterosexual clicks of girlfriends. And I wanna talk about why actually in the end it's all okay and what some important mindsets are to keep in mind anytime we deal with clicks of women. I never expected to find clicky behavior when I first came out of the closet. I remember when I first realized I liked women and I was gonna start going to lesbian bars, I expected to find a really welcoming environment where people would be happy to see me because I felt like they'd be excited that there was somebody new on the scene. I thought I was nice and had a lot to offer and that, that people would be genuinely excited to see me. I didn't expect what ended up happening was, which was feeling as if when I got to the scene, like I was back in high school again, where there were all these different groups of people and, if, and it, it, it felt like everyone had their place and I was on the outside. And even if I was attracted to a girl, if she was in a group that wasn't including me, it felt like I just had no way of, of getting to her, of talking to her, of meeting her. And, and I didn't know how to like penetrate the group. I just felt like the women there didn't, didn't want me coming up and talking to them. And it was really intimidating and frustrating and, and pretty upsetting for me at the time. And I know a lot of my clients and a lot of my friends have reported feeling the same way. So for starters, what, what is clickiness and why does it happen? So the thing that underlies all clicky mean girl behavior is simply competition and aggression. And that's not a bad thing. All creatures compete for food, for resources, for survival, for finding mates, and aggression is just a part of the evolutionary game of life that all creatures have to play. It's normal for any creature on earth to compete and to be aggressive with the creatures that they're competing with. But what ended up happening with human females, for whatever reason, human females in Western society, we evolved to feel as if we have to be nice and well-behaved and ladylike in a way where aggression is not welcome. It, it, girls aren't supposed to be physically aggressive with each other. Now, if you compare that to little boys, Oftentimes when we're going through adolescence, the most popular boys, they tend to be the biggest and the strongest and the most physically dominant, right? The best athletes, the strongest boys tend to often be the most popular young human boys. But the same thing isn't true, at least in Western societies, for human females. Because in Western societies, for whatever reason, we were raised to think that it's not okay to be aggressive. That gir little girls aren't known to fight it out physically. That's just not how we're taught to behave. So all of that competition and all of that aggression, it's not that it goes away, it's just that it comes out in other ways. Instead of competing physically, we compete with relationships. We compete socially. That's just how we ended up evolving over time. And the way that it comes out is through what's called relational aggression or social aggression. So instead of going up and hitting someone in the face, girls will exclude each other. They'll gossip behind each other's back. They'll decide that, um, they'll say things like, I'm not inviting you to my birthday party or I'm not your friend anymore. Or you'll convince each other, you know, let's not talk to Jordana today. So this is neither good nor bad, it's just what it is. And it's just how human females compete with each other. And so that's why we have cliquish behavior. It's totally normal. And it's certainly not just a lesbian thing. But there are a few reasons why cliquishness might be even more intense in the lesbian community than it is in the heterosexual community. And 
One of the main reasons is about confidence and self-esteem. And there are a number of reasons why lesbians might struggle a little bit more with self-confidence than your typical cisgendered heterosexual female would have to. And I talk about that a lot more in a different video that I'll link to below called uh, Three Reasons That Lesbians Struggle With Their Self-Confidence. But just, to, just in summary, basically, lesbians have more things that, things that we grew up with, with that might challenge our level of confidence and leave us feeling insecure. And what being a part of a group does, when a, when a woman is a part of a group, there's a great sense of safety and security that comes from being a part of the group. So any female that's inherently insecure is gonna get a lot, of, like a strong feeling of safety from being in the group. And actually what they say is that women in the group who are on the lowest on the totem pole, like the women who are the lowest on the social hierarchy of the group, they tend to be the, mo the ones who most want to exclude newcomers because let's just say the group gets bigger and then they can't have as many people in the group. The ones who are low on the totem pole are afraid that they'd be the first one to lose their spot. So whenever new people are coming in, actually the women who are the lowest on the totem pole are first of all going to feel the most insecure and they're going to be the most, they're going to, they're going to um, have the biggest drive to leave people out because of that insecurity. Another thing to realize is that when, you know, if a group brings a self sense of confidence, what is it that, what is it that defines a group? Groups are, are defined by who's not in the group. So the more you can leave people out, the more defined your group actually is. And so for anyone who's insecure and getting security and safety from a group, they might act in a more cliquish way. And again, this isn't only a, a lesbian thing. This isn't only a queer female thing, but since queer females already have more reasons why we can struggle with our self-confidence. This is something that might affect the lesbian queer community in a, in a more intense way than it would your typical cisgendered heteronormative um, you know, community. But the other thing to remember, and I think this just can't be discounted, is that within any group of girls, we're talking about even if they're just totally heterosexual, there's always gonna be some amount of competition and jealousy within the group. But when you add queer females to that group, or when it's a group of just queer females, then we have to add to that mix feelings like sexual attraction, sexual competition, and sexual jealousy, which is why sometimes lesbian cliques are like heterosexual cliques, but on crack. It could be totally crazy and super intense. And then good luck trying to get into that. If they're all competing for each other and they're having crushes on each other, and this one dated that one, and that one's dating this one now, and this one, whatever. I mean, these are webs of social relationships that we can't even begin to fathom. These are complicated relationships, and they're really like spider webs of relationships that we don't even realize how enmeshed it is. But what's really important to understand is that these are good problems to have. I get emails every day from women all around the world, in cities all over Africa, all over the Middle East, in remote parts of Asia, of towns you know, scattered throughout Latin America. These are places where it is so hard to be out. These are places where there are, you just can't show up in bars just as openly out. That the idea of having bars full of so many openly out lesbians that we could literally group together and then exclude each other, like that's actually more of a miracle than it is a problem. So truthfully, even if we are showing up and we're feeling like we're being excluded, the fact that there are so many of us out and open in one place, that is such a miracle and such a good problem to have. Another thing to remember is that if it feels as though every time you're going out, you're just dealing with cliques and exclusionary groups, or you're not having fun in the lesbian scene for whatever reason, even if it's not cliques for whatever reason, it's a good reminder that there are hot lesbians everywhere. And there are so many better ways to meet women than just going to lesbian bars. So whatever it is that you're interested in, whatever your hobbies are, whatever you like to do, whatever you're interested in, whatever volunteer work you might enjoy, whatever friend groups that you like to spend time with, hot lesbians are everywhere. And you know they say that you're more likely to find love when you're not looking for it. So sometimes being in those other places is, you know, we have way, way better chances of meeting the kind of person we wanna meet. And if we're being our best selves and showing up in those places, she's gonna be way more attracted to us in those environments than if we're just hanging out in the same old scene that we always do. And also, it's important to realize that if we're ever in a place and the people that we wanna to talk to aren't talking to us, 
it could also just be a good opportunity to maybe just be nice and friendly and, and, and talk to whoever's around us and just hold space for her and listen to her and maybe she feels left out too. So sometimes when we go out, we could just be there for other people and be a good member of the community and be a good listener. And every person we meet has a message for us, has something that we can learn from them if we're just open enough to listen. And sometimes it's just about being a good hearted person and being kind to someone else. But just lastly, one more thing I want to mention is that sometimes when, as we get more involved in our life and as time goes on, it's, it gets harder and harder and harder for us to make plans with our friends. Um, to get four, five, six women together on the same night when our schedules all align, that's actually a really rare thing. So sometimes if we see a group of women out together and they just look like the only people they wanna hang out with is each other, it might not be that they're clicky. It might be just that this is the first time in months, maybe it was the first time all year that they were finally able to see each other. And it's not that they're trying to exclude anybody else. It's just that they're psyched to see each other and we don't have to take that personally. We're not missing out on something. These are just old friends catching up with each other. These aren't new people meeting each other. These aren't new couples forming where we're missing out on the opportunity to, to be a part of it. It's, it's really not like that at all. And we don't always have to take it so personally, even though it's easy to take personally, especially having grown up in a Western society where there is so much clickiness and where we might be triggered by however it felt back when we were younger, when people really did leave us out. But the truth is that oftentimes that's not necessarily the case, even if it is how we feel. But really when we feel like women are being clicky and when we feel like we're being left out, underneath it all, that's just all about rejection and our fear of rejection. And that's totally normal and it's a natural, normal human thing that we all deal with. But there are a lot of really helpful mindsets that could make the feeling of rejection a lot easier to take. And I have a free guide called The Lesbian's Guide to Eliminating Rejection from Your Life. You can find it on the Women Wanting Women website and I'll have a link to it below. So if clickiness is something that you struggle with, then you may want to check out that free guide because it has a lot of really helpful information in it. And I recommend you downloading it. It's for free on womenwantingwomen.com. I know that probably not everyone is going to agree with what I said in this video. Maybe not everyone has experienced clicky girl behavior in the lesbian scene. So I'm actually really curious to hear your opinion and your perspective and what you think about this or what it's like outside of New York City. You know, I've only ever been a lesbian or living in New York City. So I'm curious to hear what you think other scenes are like or other cities are like. So let us know in the comment section below. But the thing I always want you to keep in mind is that if you're currently single and what you want is to find a loving partnership and if you haven't yet found it, you need to understand that eventually you are going to find that partnership. And what that means is that whoever the woman is that you're eventually going to meet, she's alive on this earth right now somewhere. And what you need to understand is that she's already yours and so you are never alone. No matter how much you might feel left out of groups, no matter how much you might fear rejection, no matter what's going on for you, at the end of the day, there is a woman on this earth who's already yours and the knowledge of her and, and it, just the way that, that women feel confident being a part of a group, you could feel confident being a part of the group of two that you both are going to eventually make up because I promise you, she is going to find you in perfect timing and you're gonna be so happy when you finally meet. So don't give up, keep going out, keep being the best version of yourself. But until next time, I just really want you to keep remembering that hot lesbians are everywhere, that love is real, and that the woman of your dreams is on her way into your life in perfect timing. And I will see you in the next video.